Okay, so uh, just as a note, when I started working on this Ford Escape to replace the valve cover gasket, I thought I was just going to be doing the gasket. Wound up having to replace the uh, entire valve cover, so you want to stay tuned to find out why. And if you like the content on the channel, please hit that subscribe and like button. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Okay, we got a 2013 Ford Escape. Uh, this has the 1.6 liter engine in it. Um, we've got a valve cover leak. We're going to be re replacing this valve cover up here. And uh, just to show you the part number. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it here first. So we're going to get this cover up out of here. It just pops up and off of there. Okay, now I had um, a misfire on here. I took these cool packs off and they had oil down in there and I cleaned them up and the uh, misfires went away for now, but it'll probably come back. So we're probably gonna have to come back, change these cool packs, but uh, it's got oil down in there just to show you a little bit how it's leaking around here. It's leaking down into the wells in the middle there finding its way down in there where the spark plugs are um, but you can see that's where it's leaking okay and before I uh, do any work I'm gonna be spraying off any of this dirt and stuff um, before we can do that we're going to uh, go ahead and get this cowl up here out of the way and we'll make sure we disconnect the uh, negative there and the positive. Make sure that we've got the, the battery disconnected before we go to spraying this off. We'll just start with our wipers. We've got a cap that pops on there. We'll go ahead and get that nut loose. And I also like to take and put a mark just so they kind of get put back on the right way okay I've just got a 15 millimeter here got to kind of hold that wiper one hand okay and usually we have to give this a pop on the end here so I'll take my pry bar just prop a little bit because you're prying on plastic here you're just going to put some pressure on it and kind of run that down a little bit and that's about all it takes usually it'll come right off there no problem and you see we've got the mark there so we just put it back the same and of course, we'll just do the very same thing on the other passenger side there. Okay, we got a eight millimeter on each side. Now we'll get the one on the driver's side here. Okay, the next thing we'll get on are these clips. And they really bite in. They got these teeth that bite in all along through here. See some of them are missing. You got them all along here. 
and we're going to work on popping those loose. Okay, I'm, I think I'm going to try to use my pick tool here and see if I can have some luck. Definitely be cautious. Alright, so there's the first one. Okay, so those are coming off pretty easy. Okay, so with all these clips out, the front's loose, we're gonna lift up, and this snaps down into here. So the only scary thing is, is that some of these may break. So we're just gonna carefully work our way along. And these are just plastic clips. And as you get to the end, it'll lift up down here like that. So it looks like one of them broke, at least I can see. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, the last one of these I removed, I think almost every single one of them broke. So not too bad. Looks like we've looks like one was already gone there so just this is what we got and they're made on here so once they all break that's about it but <clears throat> as long as it's um, holding down enough with a few of them it'll be fine okay uh, these are t25s on mine if, if they're the original anyways holding the brake fluid reservoir here so I'm gonna go ahead and start removing those okay the only thing left holding this in is uh, we got an eight millimeter over here on this side and we got one right over here we already took these two out earlier There we have that out of there. There's a look at it from the other side. You can see the insulations on there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this cover out of here and we'll get our battery disconnected. Now normally you'd never be able to disconnect it here without doing it from the post up here. But with this cowl off the, out of the way, we can unhook it here. Pull it back out of the way. We'll go ahead and get our positive disconnected while we're at it. Okay, and if you decide to wash yours off, a uh, car wash or whatever, you know, you just you know kind of do it at your own risk. You do have to take some precautions with your fuse box and and everything. We don't want uh, <clears throat> you got to be kind of cautious up here but the thing is we want to get as much of the debris we don't really care about anywhere else but we want to get as much of the debris and dirt and everything that can get down in here into the cylinder head so we want to get this as clean as possible so we're going to clean all this dirt and everything and with this cowl out of the way 
we can get access to all this and behind and, and, and clean as much as we can. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we're fixing to get the pressure washer cranked up and we're going to get over here and start cleaning this off. All right, so let's see how this goes here. got to be kind of careful getting too close you can you can blow some connectors and stuff off as well So we got it looking a whole lot better. You could do the same thing at a car wash. Uh, it's a whole lot better than it was. So uh, all we're going to do is let it dry. Now once I get everything dried out, we'll be removing a few more things. And uh, we'll spray it off with air and make sure, you know, that we don't have any loose debris that's going to be falling down in there. But we've got the majority, I feel like, of this dirt and everything. Okay, we've got it cleaned and dried up really good. We're going to start with this section right here. We've got a 8 millimeter band, and I believe it's an 8 millimeter right here. So we'll go ahead and get that loose. This one has a, you got to press up on that, and that will pop right off of there. Okay, we'll get this in here loosened up. Oh, that one's a seven millimeter. I thought that the size changed on me. Or you can use a flat. This one is a seven on mine. Okay, we'll just wiggle that off. Okay, next thing I'm gonna get on is these cool packs. I just pull this little gray lever back. Let's pull that back on each of these and then we can just push down and slip that off. Okay now we have to unclip these wires. This one's broke. It's got a clip here and then it's got okay it's got one here and then this should be clipped right here, but this one's broke. So that should have a clip under that. Okay, over here you push down on that. That tucks underneath this part. Over here we got our fuel sensor. Let's kind of give that a push down and get it to release. So you just push down there, but sometimes you have to push it down on the sensor to get it to release. And as you see, we have this loose. We have our pull packs loose. Now we have a connector right here. We can separate these. It's going to make it easier. So we can pull that back farther. 
Okay, so we have all of these. We got two eight millimeters for each of the pull packs here. And then we have eight millimeters holding it here, here. But then as you come back here, there's also a 10 right here that needs to come off. And then we're going to remove this. It goes over the high pressure pump there. And there's going to be a couple of seven millimeters right there. So we're going to, and then over here, uh, just to forewarn you, you got a stud going into this part of your air duct, but if it's yours is like mine, this is going to seize and I had to actually pry that up and out of there with my trim tool. And I, I had to use my impact just to get the nut loose and some vice grips. It was just seized. There was no way to get this loose and then slip this off. So that basically goes on there, but you, you might run into that. So we're just going to go through and we'll start getting these cool packs first. And I did... Um, crank it up by the way and moved it after washing this so in case you're wondering so as long as you kind of steer clear of your fuse box and you know just kind of I took my air hose and kind of dried everything out a little bit before firing it up so there's our first coil pack okay so we got the bolts out of our coil packs. I said on the studded one, if yours wasn't stuck like mine, you would take the 10 millimeter off of the top and then that would kind of pop up and then you'd be able to pull this out, I guess, to be able to remove it. Uh, but either way, I got it out of there. And now I was thinking about it, you may have to pop this out regardless of whether the nut seizes because uh, otherwise you have to go and remove that, which we may have to wind up getting to that anyways. Okay, we're going to get these other 8 millimeters here and here. And this is just our coil pack cover or mount okay so the eight millimeters are loose if it's not broken those will stay there or they should stay there all right so we're going to go back here and get these seven millimeters now these will come out so you want to get a hand on these so you don't drop it you know little bolts and once they disappear you will never find them again And I could be wrong. Okay, these are going to stay as well. So I've got one more 10 millimeter that I was showing you. Okay, so the only other 10 millimeter was right here. And that will have this loose here. So we should be able to lift this up and kind of come. Okay, so this will just lift up. And I may have to take that off later, but it will come off of here, slides under it. So this is just the cool pack mount or cover or whatever. You see those are supposed to stay in there. Now you got a piece of insulation here. If it's not completely deteriorated, it should look something like that. And the other good thing about having all this apart is I can take my air and blow all this out. If there's any more water down in here, I can get rid of it. Okay, the next thing we're going to get on is these two hoses here.
Just pushing these out of the way for now. Okay, these just have push down tabs, but uh, sometimes they don't work. Uh, these little pick tools are just invaluable when dealing with these connectors. See how easily that removed it. I would highly recommend labeling things just so you don't get mixed up. I'm just popping that tab out from there. Now this attaches up here. All you do is pull this collar back, slide it and just give it a pull off. It's basically, it pushes these tabs out on each side. So watch that tab, it pulls those out. It's got one on the other side, and then it'll just pop right off. See, there's the one on the other side. We're gonna get on this hose right here. It goes to the back of this part of this air duct here. Okay, so we're just gonna squeeze top and bottom here. Okay, we have that hose completely loose. We can set that out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna work on freeing up this air duct here. I've got a 12 millimeter. I'm gonna take this is the little ball stud for your shroud, so Keep up with this. All right, so there we have that. That's free, but it's not gonna be enough out of the way. All right, we're gonna go right down here, locate the band, and we've got a seven millimeter right there. We're gonna loosen that up. Just using my little micro ratchet to get down in here to loosen it. All right, All right so it's loose. We probably could uh, just push it out of the way. I don't know if there's any need to remove it, but we could also Wiggle it up and out of here, I guess. Okay, so there it comes out of there. We'll just take it out, I guess. We've got a clip for our high pressure pump here. Let's squeeze on that tab. Okay, uh, one of the next things I'm going to do is take some air and blow all around this to make sure there's not any other loose debris. I've got a couple more things to do before we're going to be able to gain access to this. Uh, the next thing we're going to have to get on is this fuel line here. Now we're going to work on removing these lines now that I've blowed all this out. And just to minimize, you want to have some safety glasses and a rag. It's going to have some pressure. Now I'm using a 17 millimeter. Uh, this is like a flare nut, whatever type wrench. These are better, but if you don't have one, a 17 should should work. All right, so we got it loose. It wasn't very tight, and we'll just ease this off and catch that fuel. Okay, nothing really came out there. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this one. Alright, so there we got that piece. Alright, we're going to start taking out these 10 millimeters here.
Okay, we're gonna work on prying this up here. So um, we wanna gently try to wiggle and pry up on this until we can work these up and off those injectors and uh, one or two things going to happen either <clears throat> it's going to pull off from these you want to have a rag because fuel is going to dump out of here it'll pull off from these or it could pull one of these up and out of here okay so we're going to take this harness off here but if you have one it may stick to the fuel rail and it will just pull up and out of here and it's going to look like that <clears throat> and if it does just stick it back down in there because that's just going to be a place for debris and stuff to get in and you'll said so if it pulls this part up you'll pop it loose from the fuel rail just pull it off of there or use some spreader pliers but um, all of these stayed except for the very end one but we want this wire here out of our way so we'll just take this and just set that aside okay now with these here I'm gonna try to spin them if I can but they may not want to turn. So this one here is turning a little bit. These appear to be stuck. All right, we're gonna leave those where they're at and I think maybe I can work with this. All right, we're at the back, there's a plate back here that goes over the back side of this valve cover. We got three, these eight millimeters we're gonna remove. Okay, we'll just lift this out and then we can see our 10 millimeters here. Okay, right over here we got our timing solenoid. We're gonna, first of all, get this connector off of here. Okay, and that's got one of those that doesn't wanna work. We're gonna need the pick tool. So we'll go ahead and use the pick tool. See if we can pop this one up. All right, so we got that. And we're gonna take a eight millimeter we're going to loosen this little bolt right here. This is in our way of getting to our bolt. <clears throat> You'll see in a second. So you want to start wiggling this. Sometimes these can be rather tough to push out. All right, there we go. Okay, so there we have that. We'll set that aside. All right, if you can see with that one out of the way, we can get to this pin right down here. So we're just gonna start with these back ones. Got another one right here. You see that plate was covering these up. All right, then we've got one that's right here. I'm going to need a little bit of an extension. Okay, we've got all the back ones loose. Now, if they're not broken, once they're loose, they should stay on there. Now I just wanted to point out why I've got it on my mind. You see how when this seal fails, starts leaking from you know here and here, and it's running right down into these spark plug wells. You see 
how the um, fuel went down in there that'll evaporate some and I can clean that out but you can see how these fill up and there's nowhere for that oil to go This sensor right here is blocking us from getting a bolt. And now we'll uh, remove the sensor here with an eight millimeter. twist that kind of to the side there that'll be enough out of our way Okay, now over here we need to remove this. It's got an eight millimeter, just like the rear one. Okay, so the only two we got left is here. And then we got this one right here in the middle. Okay, we've got all of these loose, made sure that you can pull them as one last precaution. We're going to cover these injectors. Um, you know, you can cover it with a little Ziploc bag to something when we go to lifting up on this to keep debris out of our injectors. <clears throat> all right, so it is loose. <clears throat> the only question is whether I can slip it back with these injectors in a way here and I'm barely making it but I did do it okay I did forget to pull the dipstick out but it's coming with it just get that out of the way Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> Let's flip it over and look at it. So the bolt should stay in there. Yeah, you can see that the gasket is completely flattened out. It's not able to seal anymore. So a lot of trouble to get to this, but um, if you're having leaks this is something's going to have to be done okay so i'm going to just get some alcohol and work on wiping this up all right so i've got my replacement here Just wipe this up with a little bit of alcohol. Okay, and our new gasket come with some gray RTV as well. Really how like how it's in a small tube. We're gonna start right here because it's a good place to locate it. <clears throat> 
so I like the small tube because usually that's about all you ever need you know you buy a big tube and if you don't take care with it wrapping it up it hardens up on you and these kind of lock down in there a little bit but you still want to make sure when you're putting this down on the cylinder head there that you that it stays in place if it slips out it can get caught in the wrong place and get messed up and then you'll have leaks and be redoing it so it's not a bad idea to push it down and kind of give it a give it a test see if it's going to stay in place it appears that it is but you also got to be careful don't get it caught on nothing when you're installing it and pull it out of place too but this is fitting on here nicely so you can always you take a new one and I mean yes this will compress down but the thing is over time it gets brittle and hardened and um, compresses and it doesn't have any seal left so this one sticks up you know a good sixteenth of an inch or so okay up here we want to pay to particular attention to these areas here where we have junctions we we'll to make sure that's that we take and scrape any loose debris and if you have to you can take a little wire brush kind of clean a little bit out same thing here and here and then we got a junctions here so we're going to put a little rtv at all those areas we want to take some set some alcohol and we want to go hit these areas we want to make sure that these are especially clean but we want you know we want to wipe the whole area we're going to make sure that we go over these areas till they're absolutely clean okay so i went to do the valve cover gasket as you can see we got our new fell pro on here I thought everything was going well however this little ball fell off of here and uh, what I had found was when I went to clean this just simply by brushing up against these little tabs has these little tabs hold this little check ball in here I guess this is tied to the the PCV system if you will maybe somebody can explain it more but uh, anyways that fell out and down into the cylinder head so I had to get that out and uh, basically this little piece here these were just brittle and broken so couldn't use this so what I had to do is order another one I've got it over here and it took me about a week to get this uh, you could probably go to the dealer they could probably get it quicker this is going to be the same part that they're going to give you now you can notice on this one right here we have these little plastic tabs however they're just not brittle so giving the amount of work no way in the world I was going to try to fix that I just got another one and plus just to ensure that this PCV system is working properly I want to make sure and have a new one this one already has the gasket on here said so the gasket installs pretty straightforward just line up the little circle right here and lay it on there but this one already had one so I'm just going to use the one that's on it okay and to save your head you may want to prop your hood up this three inch hook here likes to keep hitting you in the top of the head the way that it's setting there when your hood's propped up so just a little tip all right we're going to be getting some new spark plugs in here it's just way easier to get them while we're at it So we're putting some Iridium spark plugs back in here. Now I wanted to uh, talk about something real quick. <clears throat> now a 5 8 
socket, spark plug socket, it usually fits these things. However, it's too thick walled and it doesn't like to fit down into this thing. So I had to use my 16 millimeter and it's working okay, still tight, but working okay. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. If you look down in there, you see how the shape of that is. Well, the spark plug, the socket doesn't like to fit in there. So a thin walled is the best. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ford didn't make a special spark plug socket or something for this. Anyway, we're gonna get some new spark plugs in here. So this thing likes to get stuck down in here even though it's a thin walled socket too. <clears throat> I want to be torquing these to about 18 foot pounds. 15, 18. So you watch, I'll have to wiggle this thing just to get it back out of here. It's a tight fit. I've already had to do this once and put the RTV on and take it back off, so I wasn't real happy about it. So the main thing when you're putting your RTV on is to get it right there in the little junction areas. And get a get a little glob. I got some trash in it there or something. Get a little glob there, the front and the back. Definitely not something you want to be coming back and redoing. Now on top of putting them there, I'm going to put on mine, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to put a light dab up this curvature. So I've already done this once and I had to clean it all back off. <clears throat> I've just found that curves and things like this are prone to leak. I got that sensor back in my way over here. All right, so I'm liking this. All right, so I'm gonna carefully set this down here. Let me get my lipstick out of the way here. hitting my screw that I put back in here. Okay, I'm just trying to go easy so I'm not smearing the RTV. So I've got it set. Now I'm just gonna kind of start in the middle I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hand tighten these and let my RTV set up. Well, I think they say like a few hours. I just let mine set up for 24 hours. <clears throat> I find that I have less problems that way. So this, um, vehicle has 160,000 miles on it so the plastic got brittle on that part of the valve cover now somebody may know an, an easy way to fix that and go on with it but I just chose to get another one this was 75 plus tax So it took me about a week to get it. So this thing's just been setting around. All right, so I'll finish snugging these 
down. I'm just going to get them hand tight. Okay, next thing I want to talk about a minute because, like I said, either one or two things are going to happen when you take that fuel rail off. You have to remove it to get the valve cover. Either you're going to pull it loose from the fuel rail up here. You got two O rings, like a little Teflon. You got this O ring. You got this little weird O ring goes down here that um, you have to pretty much cut it and remove it. Um, now there's a kit that they sell. I'm going to leave some links to these. Um, there's also a special tool for like sizing this one right here. So, but they claim if you pull whichever part you pull out, you're supposed to put new O rings. You know, is that necessarily true? We're going to find out because I'm putting I'm putting mine back on here and basically if it pulls out from down here we're gonna to have to push it back down in and seat it and put just a light dab of oil maybe so I'm gonna just try to push that one back down I put a light dab of oil on it I'll probably seat it more when I put the fuel rail I'm gonna make sure that it pushes and clicks down in there but I will uh, leave links to these seals said so you'll need that and you'll need the little installer tool as well that appears to be out of place okay these I'm gonna torque because they're gonna be difficult to get to after the fact to 80 inch pounds go ahead and pre torque them I'm going to put a light dab of my silicone paste on these O-rings. Like I said, if I have any issues, I can come back and replace these seals. But I think they're going to be alright. So these seals will be something that I probably come back and I attack in a separate video. Now you'll notice how these kind of line up with these plastic tabs let me get you in here a little bit see those areas right there it's why they kind of need to be straight now this one right here is a little bit turned and it did not even come loose I'm not sure what's going on with that one it looks like it's gonna go even though it's not exactly straight pretty easy to push on there I got to get my I guess I gotta get my clips, hold on. Okay, so we just got those setting back down on there. Push. Now I'm gonna push down on this really hard and make sure that that seats back in. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the bolts back in here. I just don't like the idea of this stuff being uncovered. I need to get my cap on here too. I'm just going to torque these like 80 foot pounds. Go ahead and get this hose while it's handy.
Okay, this tube was supposed to go under these two wires. Probably not going to be a lot of this left uh, that I can hook up. It's going to get in my way on my bolt. Probably going to have to take these solenoids back out. I wasn't thinking because I'm going to let it set up for 24 hours before I torque the rest of them. Now with these, you want to kind of get them set into place where they're on there properly. Just kind of get them both finger tightened. Just finger tighten them both down, make sure that it's in place good before you go to taking off, tighten it. And I said I'm using this flared wrench. And these don't have to be horribly tight. If you over tighten these fittings, then you'll be replacing the tube. You, know, you want it snug, but don't overdo it okay so I'm just gonna let it set up for uh, 24 hours and come back you don't have to uh, but I would recommend letting the RTV set a couple hours at least okay so we're getting ready to torque these to 80 inch pounds I did have to take these back out because I got ahead of myself remember I already torqued these back here under the fuel rail because I knew it wasn't going to get to those. So I'm just going to start in the middle. So it wasn't quite 24 hours I let it set up, but let it set up nonetheless so it's not squishing out everywhere. So just going 80 inch pounds. Okay, so just went around and double checked those. I'm going to put these solenoids back. You see me take those out first time. I just got them in the way. I'm just putting them back. Okay, and we just reconnected those solenoids. I'm getting ready to get this reconnected. Make sure that's snapped in good. And we got this connector that's running back from here. I'll go ahead and plug that into our high pressure pump. I think it connects here. I'm just going to rotate this sensor back around and get this 8 millimeter. Okay, I'm getting ready to set this uh, cool pack cover here. Um, I did get that stud put back in there that pulled out. These uh, seven millimeters in the back actually screw into where this high pressure pump goes. So we're just gonna fasten these down, these eights and then the sevens back there. Okay, and we can't forget our insulation that probably serves no purpose. We're just going to hand tighten these, they don't have to be very tight.
Got our seven millimeter. Okay, we gotta get this piece of insulation back here. Okay, the next piece I'm gonna set back in here is this piece of the air duct, and got these two places bolt here, and then there's the spot where that goes down to hold it. And when I pulled mine off, this pulled out, and this stayed on the pipe down there. So basically, I'm just going to slip it back on here. Took the time to clean it up a little bit. Um, looks like I've got it going on wrong. Just going to line up that notch right there. Okay, and I had a cap down here covering this up. So we're going to just feed it. So there's still a little bit of residual oil on mine there, making it slide down real easy. This uh, ball stud's a 12, and you don't want to tighten any of these real tight. They're going into these brass inserts. They're just going to strip. Okay, I realize this has to go under here. That's better. That clips into the side of this. Okay, we're just gonna reset the air box. Got our rubber grommets that these are going to set into down here. Okay, I had to take that air boot off a minute, it's just not enough room. It's funny, I don't remember this being so difficult to remove. I'm going to take this back loose and free this whole thing up so I can get that piece in. 
Okay, I just loosened that band and took this back loose just so this thing it's just it's just fighting me going back in don't know why so we're gonna try it this way just seemed to be uh seemed to come out easy but going back in was a little different all right let me just reconnect this tighten that both those up And I do believe this is missing another little rubber strap that comes over here. Okay, we're just going to hook the battery up before we get this cowl on. Alright, we got those tied. I'm not worried about this bracket. I'm doing other work to this vehicle. And I'm just leaving mine off. Okay, so we're just going to get our cowl back in here. Set it on those. So we got to get our little bolt going there, there, and then there, and get these to line up. Just kind of put them all in loosely. We'll go to the other side. Okay, now that we got them all loosely in, we'll go ahead and snug them up so we know they're in alignment. So you don't want to over tighten them, you're just going to crack and break the plastic. All right, we're going to get this set in place. If you we're lucky to not break all of your clips, put a light dab of grease on those, and who knows, you might get lucky the next time you remove it and uh, no more of them break. But don't expect too much. This plastic just gets brittle. Right, so now we're gonna line up the clips back here. Right now for these little, let's get all those back in. Now I'm not going to be putting my engine cover on until I've thoroughly checked this thing out for any leaks or anything. All right, we've got that secured. Okay, get the wiper back on. Now the way these are made, you can pretty much, you can't put it on wrong because it has these flat spots. So if you put it halfway back where it was before, it will be in the right spot. Okay, so we'll just tighten this back down. And this is a 15. Snugging up the passenger side. We'll pop our little caps back on. Okay, so time to crank it up and uh, purge the air. Get the uh, high pressure pump primed up. It'll probably take a minute. All right, I haven't tried to crank it yet. So let's see what's going to do. We're going to see if it's going to crank. Go check for leaks and stuff, etc. Okay, it was about ready to start. I was trying not to let the starter go too long. All right, there we go. That check engine lights, probably because I had the box unplugged there a minute ago. Don't smell any fuel or anything, so I would say that those seals on the injectors are doing just fine. I may do a video, like I said, later on uh, replacing those. 
Um, they're like a hundred dollars last time I checked. Unless they went down, and then you got to have a tool, and that's like eighty dollars. It sizes the little O-ring that special O-ring goes on the end of the injector that goes into the cylinder. <clears throat> so we may do that later. So anyway, sounding real good, and uh, I guess that's gonna gonna do it. All right, so that's gonna do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm actually surprised how much smoother it sounds with those spark plugs. I know those iridiums are really good spark plugs. Uh, it's got 160,000 miles on it, however, so they'd probably been on there. I uh, doubt they'd been changed. So, But I'm really surprised that it made that much difference from what it sounded like before. It's much smoother with the spark plugs. But anyways, uh, it sounds good. Don't see any issues or any leaks or anything. So... Uh, that's definitely going to take care of the oil draining down into those spark plugs and fouling those out. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. As always, I invite you to subscribe and thanks for watching.